Shriver had a great outlook on life. He said once, it is well to be prepared for life as it is, but it's better to be prepared to make life better than it is. As the architect of President Lyndon Johnson's War on Poverty, Sarge Shriver made life better than it was for thousands of our country's most vulnerable kids and families. Today, the Sergeant Shriver National Center on Poverty Law carries on that tradition that Sarge started over 50 years ago. It's a tradition of public service, and it's deeply rooted in a commitment to social justice. By expanding the capacity of public interest lawyers and legal aid attorneys, the programs at the Shriver Center give a voice to those in our justice system who may have lost their homes or their jobs. Through a combination of legal advocacy, policy development, and communication, the Shriver Center is on the front line, aggressively attacking issues related to poverty. They also help inform federal, state, and local lawmakers that are looking for new ways to end poverty across the country and ensuring that every American has equal access to justice and opportunity. In 2005, the city of Joliet, Illinois, sought to condemn the Evergreen Terrace development on the riverfront. The U.S. Department of Justice filed suit against Joliet, joining the Shriver Center and its pro bono partners from the law firm of Jenner & Block to preserve this affordable housing. The case is currently on trial. What I love and value about living at Evergreen is the, the community, first of all. We like family, and uh, I like these people. I consider, my, I consider them my family. If Evergreen was to be torn down, I can't say where I would go. I would feel like it's been a tragedy for myself and families, kids, to be placed where, I don't know, they don't know, and that's the whole thing here. The city never gave us an ideal of what, where, where we're gonna go with this and what's gonna happen to everyone with it being that the numbers show that uh, Joliet do not have enough units to home 360 something odd people and mainly families, people with children. It's a good thing the Shriver Center is here. For um, years ago, I can't say this place would still be here if it wasn't for the Shriver Center. As a very young child, Erica Miller was sexually abused over a three-year period by her father. Recently, she testified before a committee of the Illinois House of Representatives in favor of the ensuring success in school legislation. The aftermath of these experiences basically affected my school, like when I was in class trying to concentrate. I couldn't concentrate because I would I would feel like it was the assault was happening to me all over again. I would freak out whenever my mom left me because my perpetrator told me that if I told anyone what he did to me, he would kill my mother. The first school I went to, junior high, wouldn't allow the counselor to come to a school when I was in school to counsel me. And there was one incident in school where I was having a flashback and the teachers were like, what's wrong with this student? And they sent me to the principal's office and I was locked in a closet. School kicked me out, expelled me and so I was homeschooled. I think if the legislation does pass the Senate, I think um, kids, students, will actually get the help they need. They would feel a lot more safe knowing that people are around them know how to deal with what happened to them. The Shriver Center works to improve the laws and policies that affect the lives of people living in poverty. We try to improve their quality of life. We try to improve the opportunities they have to move up in life, starting with direct relationships with people in poverty uh, in the communities where they live, which is where our agenda comes from, and then working with and for those people to use all the toolbox that's available to attorneys. Our programs are designed to build the nationwide workforce of lawyers who do this same work. Uh, we have communications program that provide up to the minute information and uh, advocacy advice. And then we have a training program meant to bring the skills needed to do this kind of work to lawyers across the country. So across this range of advocacy, communications and training, the object is to improve the measure of justice available to people living in poverty. The Clearinghouse Review is a resource for public interest lawyers. Elise Brown, a lawyer with MFY Legal Services in New York, 
supervises MFY's foreclosure prevention project. The Clearinghouse Review has been a, a great source of, of information in terms of what's happening across the country in a very rapidly changing legal environment. 2010, there was an excellent article published um, in the midst of the sort of storm of regulations and legal decisions about the Home Affordable Modification Program. It was an unbelievable resource in terms of its comprehensive um, review of, of decisions of how to use the various provisions of HAMP. The law and the rules were changing and the federal government was constantly reissuing regulations and modifying it and tweaking it and the article sort of was able to stop and capture uh, uh, a very wide view of the moment in time that we were all struggling with this program. Equal justice leadership is central to the Shriver Center's mission. One way the Shriver Center does this is through the Leadership Academy. I have found myself thinking a lot more uh, strategically and thinking a lot more big picture than I than I do on a daily basis of just this is what I have to get done in my work day and part of that was watching um, the video uh, on Sergeant Shriver and learning that history and sort of the history of civil legal aid and it really brought me a sense of my place um, a little bit of, of that history and I didn't know that before. We've got an incredible cohort of students who are all thinking about and talking about these issues together. Uh, it's one thing to read a, a great book or um, get a summary of a study about how, you know, diff disparate impacts of a policy, but to do that same work with a group of people that are geared towards um, uh, both wanting to understand and also wanting to find creative solutions to that, there's something amazing and, um, uh, and uh, the energy that's in the room when we're talking about those issues together, it's incredible. The Child Care Assistance Program provides child care subsidies to families most in need. Not only does it, does it help children and families with child care issues, families so that they can have peace of mind that their children are in safe and quality settings. For children, the, the opportunity to have joyful learning. Parents are working are going to school and need the child care in order to continue and improve their life. Without the Shriver Center helping and being on the forefront along with other advocates to fight for child care subsidies, families would be bereft. I think one of the reasons we're so proud uh, of the Sergeant Shriver Poverty Law Center is because it brought together so many of my dad's passions. Uh, he was such an avid believer in fighting against poverty. He was, in the end, such a lawyer. I mean, he so believed that the law could be a source for good. Because in his view, uh, poverty was in some fundamental sense, uh, at some basic level, uh, the result of unfair rules. So I think he'd be out uh, in Chicago often if he were alive today, uh, talking to the folks at the Sergeant Shriver National Poverty Law Center. He wouldn't have cared that it was named for him. He was proud of that. But he would care that there were lawyers, idealistic, powerfully motivated, smart, intelligent, hardworking lawyers who were thinking about inequality, who were thinking about the way the rules are set, who were thinking about changing them, uh, so that those people who have the greatest challenges have at least an equal chance uh, at uh, the kind of future that the country should promise everyone, an equal opportunity future. Mm -hmm.